All right, you guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, if I told you a few years ago that the new Mazda 3 here would come with a turbocharger eventually, you maybe wouldn't have believed me, but what do you know, here we are. This is the 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo. We're going to go into great detail with this one and give you our first impressions on the car. So let's get into it. Okay, so the Mazda 3 has always been kind of a value proposition in its segment, especially when compared to some of the European manufacturers. And here, the Mazda 3 Turbo is no different. Uh, so this one here in front of us today is the sedan version of the car. Uh, it starts at $32,900 Canadian, and the hatchback starts at $33,900 Canadian. And with that, as standard, you get all-wheel drive, and you also get the next generation, the newest iteration of Mazda's 2.5 liter Skyactiv G turbocharged in line four. And in this form right here, it makes 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. No matter what way you spin it, 320 pound feet of torque is gonna make for a quick car. So let's get on inside and go for a drive. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Today is a very exciting day, not only for you guys, uh, but for us as well here at Roads Untraveled. So uh, 2021 Mazda 3 now has a turbocharger. Very exciting, very exciting. Uh, quick specs off the bat, 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque uh, when you're putting 93 or higher octane in it and then uh, I believe about 300 pound or 310 pound feet of torque uh, if you put a little lower octane fuel in it. But here in the Mazda 3, for the past couple of years, this new generation, um, the general public at large and the Mazda fan community at large has been waiting patiently for a turbocharged model of this new generation Mazda 3. And Mazda has finally delivered, and it is good. So there's a lot of things going on here. And to start with the exterior, as you guys can see, does not really tell really any of the story here. Um, there's only two turbo badges on the vehicle, which I love. Very Japanese, very subtle, very humble. There's one turbo badge on the engine itself, and then one on the back of the car. But other than that, uh, in the sedan version, there's no wing like you can get on the hatchback. So what you have is a very conservative looking and kind of sleeper Mazda 3 that has 320 pound feet of torque. Now any, any vehicle, modern vehicle that doesn't weigh 5,000 pounds and isn't <laughs> incredibly tall and lifted off the ground with 320 pound feet will be a quick vehicle. So the team over at Mazda has put a lot of work into making this turbo engine work in this new application and to make it as smooth as humanly possible. And for them, that definition is to make it feel like a larger displacement V6, which first impressions are something I don't take for granted. And this has got to be the smoothest turbocharged four cylinder in a modern vehicle that I've driven. A lot of now, a lot of newer models that we've driven in the past with these kind of smaller displacement turbocharged engines that are really high strung, putting out a lot of boost and have that really, really high torque number down low in the rev bed. Now, in most cars like that, 
you get a really quick spool up and then it just kind of dies off at the top and you feel there's inconsistency in the throttle when you don't want there to be. And that is just kind of a side effect of how most of those engines are tuned. And I, I literally, I say most because it is most new four cylinder turbos that, are, that I've driven that drive like that. Now, I've said this before, I've pretty much given up on talking about manual transmissions in new car reviews. Um, I just, I don't feel like beating a dead horse every time a car doesn't come out in a manual, but I think here specifically in the new Mazda 3 Turbo, I think it's very important to talk about exactly where this car fits in the Mazda lineup and the target of this new product. It is not a daily driver that you are also going to take onto the track. Don't get this car wrong. Just because it has a turbo, Mazda has said this uh, explicitly uh, <laughs> during this press launch that they are not targeting this at the track enthusiast. It is for a mature audience that will have just as much fun daily driving the car as they would if they're on a spirited drive on a back road. Not the track, a spirited drive. Lucky for us, there's some corners coming up. So uh, let's do what the Mazda 3 Turbo should do quite well, and that is drive and take on some corners. Um, love the simplicity in all Mazda products, and the 3 Turbo is no different. Quick on off for your sport mode, that's it. There's no individual settings, nothing to play with and I kind of appreciate that to be honest. We'll go into manual mode and we will head on up into these corners. Now that 320 pound feet of torque comes on very early on in the power band and continues all the way up as the power increases. It does die off at the top a little bit. If you look at the dyno graph, you can see that 250 horsepower does peak uh, relatively late in the power band, uh, but it's the, it's the torque that really speaks with this engine and it is what you feel through the steering. It's what you feel in the seat. Um, and it's what really makes this car shine. It makes it a, an incredibly smooth driving experience uh, and it absolutely does feel like a bigger displacement engine. I mean, even, even in terms of sound, it does have a certain kind of growl to it. It does, it's got a bass to it. Um, and while not a fast car, it's not a fast car. Um, and I am, I've gotta say, I am slightly disappointed in, in the raw speed of the car. 320 pound feet of torque on paper is a lot, right? Um, but when you really put it in practice, it's not, as fast as I was expecting it to be. But I think a lot of that is, is on purpose. It's not meant to have that torque spike. And I think that's what makes a lot of those other cars feel violent. And you know, you really gotta, boom, you gotta pay attention because the turbo is spooling up. Whereas here, your throttle position is very consistent and can be uh, very consistent throughout your gears and when left in automatic mode in sport mode it will I mean basically never shift gears mid corner um, and it will downshift relatively quickly uh, in anticipation of a corner if it knows how you're driving and it is in sport mode so of course this has Mazda's G vectoring control on board so what that does is basically just make the car handle um, as best as it could, as it can and as smooth as it possibly can. So uh, what it does in real time is basically constantly measures the uh, vertical load on each tire and the G-forces and sends torque to each wheel depending on how much grip it has. Uh, and the, the programming basically for that G-vectoring control is slightly different uh, in sport mode and it will send power a little bit more aggressively to the rear axle when you're powering out of a corner. Let's up a little bit of torque upon turning as well, which I found very interesting, and that is um, essentially just to make that initial turn in that much more predictable and to not have an inconsistent amount of torque um, because that turn in and the load on the front tires. 
and you can you can actually really feel it uh, on entry. The car loves to turn in, especially in sport mode, and the the requirements upon you as a driver, as as far as corrections and kind of adjustments mid corner, are really minimized. And that was Mazda's goal here to create not a steering experience that is precise but at the same time makes it really difficult for you as a driver to mess up your line in a corner and to really upset the car um, and in combination with that all-wheel drive system constantly varying where the torque is sent to all four wheels and you have yourself a vehicle that grips most of the time and does not feel like a front-wheel drive car which is exactly what Mazda wanted to avoid okay Okay, so here it is in the flesh, the latest iteration of Mazda's Skyactiv-G 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. Now there are a few key things that Mazda's done here that they want to make you guys, the consumer, aware of uh, in how they've made this basically a more efficient turbocharged engine and how they've made it kind of feel more like a larger displacement V6 and not a downsized turbocharged engine that kind of dies off at the top end. So there's a few things that they've done to make this happen. It has an integrated water to air intercooler within the intake manifold. So this is basically a, a thing on packaging. They effectively shorten the distance between the intake, where the engine pulls in the air, and the intake valves themselves by integrating that intercooler into the intake manifold and creating a scenario where the turbo likes to spool up very quickly. Another thing that they've done is put ejector valves, that's what they call them, into the exhaust manifold so that below 1600 RPM they're closed so that the velocity of the exhaust gases are going quicker so that again the turbo is like really ready to spool up all the time. Um, few people will notice that this does run pretty high compression for a turbo engine. Uh, it's at 10.5 to 1 compression and peak boost is around 17.5 PSI and they do this basically to avoid running down that like that modified tuner road of adding more fuel um, and lowering compression to prevent knock. So effectively they've made a turbo engine that basically feels like a V6 but has that really broad uh, torque band. So really cool stuff here. Uh, let's get back on the road and finish up the drive. You can really feel that front end dig in and the rear end, honestly the rear end got loose on me a couple times. It was probably because I was driving a little bit aggressive, uh, but it also is because that initial turn in with that G vectoring control is, is really something else. You feel the car begin to rotate like moments after, almost instantaneously after the car is settled and loaded up after turn in. It is, um, it's really quite something, and this is something I've experienced in only a few other, mostly front wheel drive cars, honestly, that have that really hard turn in. And the difference here is that instead of pulling out and potentially having uh, push and understeer in a front wheel drive car, you do have that torque being sent to the rear wheels very aggressively, especially in sport mode, um, which essentially you get best of both worlds. You get that real mean front, front wheel drive kind of turn in feeling, you get that nice kind of rotation, and then you get a lot of power on exit, uh, meanwhile not having to really adjust the steering very much at all. Now, there is quite a bit of body roll here. This is not an AMG product, it's not an M product. And honestly, for that I'm thankful, because some of those AMG products just are too rough and too obnoxious, in my opinion, for a daily driver kind of car, and that's exactly what the Mazda 3 is. Thank you. 
regardless, Mazda has decided to stay with a six-speed auto. They have not gone with like a seven, eight, nine, or even a 10-speed like Ford and GM are doing. Uh, and that is simply because Mazda wants to limit the amount of times you're changing gear so that that power band and that turbo response and that torque delivery that they've worked so hard on can actually be put to good use. And there's just less upsetting the car mid corner and accelerating and braking and less uh, upsetting of the actual balance of the chassis when you're not shifting gears as much. Um, and you still get that really good fuel economy in sixth gear as it is geared quite tall. Uh, a couple other key differences with the turbo model. So the dampers are actually slightly stiffer on this model. Um, now compared to the standard Mazda 3, I can't really notice a difference. I'm sure if I drove them back to back, so it might be a bit stiffer. Uh, the front springs have also uh, been stiffened up about 15%, and uh, that basically has just evened out uh, and compensated for the extra weight, the added weight of the turbo engine. So um, there you go. It's all in what I just said there right now, that this is effectively rides very similar, if not pretty much the same in terms of comfort as that original Mazda 3. Oh, it's nice, it's really good. It's really good to drive, you guys. Really great to drive. I, I wouldn't say it's the most fun on a back road um, because it doesn't have that like really crazy auditory experience. There's zero exhaust crackles. There's really no exhaust no noise at all, um, except in the mid range, like I said, it's got a bit of a growl as you can hear, which is kind of nice. Uh, here's another thing to note, and this again kind of goes along with um, the amount of control the driver has, is uh, even in manual mode, and my business partner Grayson uh, with Roads Untraveled actually noticed this shooting the car yesterday. Uh, when you're in manual mode, and certain cars will do this differently, normally in a car with track mode, you put it in track mode, in manual you can bang off the rev limiter, and no matter what the car won't shift up. This is not the case in the Mazda 3 Turbo, uh, which is another really good indication that it's not made for the hardcore enthusiast directly um, because it will automatically shift up before redline even if you're in manual mode. Um, so there's no way to actually bang off the rev limiter in this car. It will just not do it. Uh, redline's just past 6,000 RPM and it will, I'll demonstrate here um, so you guys can see, but it basically will shift kind of 58, 57, 5800 RPM, um, which is a minor gripe, but I'm just saying this, this is the difference, you guys, between a vehicle with a, a dedicated track mode where all the systems actually go off and you have full control over everything, uh, or this where, like in first gear, waiting. No, see, it's in manual, it's already changed. And it's already changed once again. So it's not really, it's not really manual mode. Like, it sh you guys saw that. It shifted way early, way earlier. And I get it's trying to predict what I'm doing, but I have it in manual mode. Not shifting, not shifting. And see, 5,500 RPM. That's all, six to 700 RPM before redline, and you cannot get it to go to redline. Um, so take from that what you will, but even in automatic, it shifts at 5,500 RPM. You know what I really think that is? They're trying to pronounce that torque figure. This car isn't about the peak power, it's about the torque, and that's what it is. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a first impression drive and a first look at the 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo. Uh, I know this has been on a lot of your guys' radar, and I know a lot of you guys were also hoping it was going to come in a manual. Even though it doesn't come in a manual, very impressive package, especially for the money. Um, and I think a lot of a lot of people, especially in kind of all weather locations such as the Pacific Northwest, a lot of people are going to appreciate uh, the all-wheel drive and turbo in combination in a small package like the Mazda 3. Unfortunately, we're not driving the hatchback. The hatchback, oh God, looks so much better than the sedan. Also, you can get a wing and uh, the little front valance up there with the turbo model, but the hatch just looks way better. I'd personally take the hatch, but 
Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit, hit us up on Instagram at Roads Untraveled. See you guys next time.